In this section, I'm going to briefly discuss one application of the Fourier transform, namely filtering. This discussion, however, will be relatively brief, as much of this material on filtering overlaps with material covered in the earlier unit on Fourier series. Earlier in the context of Fourier series, we discussed filtering at some length. As part of this discussion, we were introduced to three types of frequency selective filters, namely ideal low pass, ideal high pass, and ideal band pass filters. Since the slide that we're currently viewing and the next several slides are identical to the ones that were presented in the earlier unit on Fourier series, I won't go through these slides in any detail here. I'll simply draw to your attention the fact that these slides were covered earlier and you can refer to this earlier discussion if necessary. When filtering was discussed earlier in the context of Fourier series, one or more work through examples were presented. Those examples, however, were specific to Fourier series. Since we're now considering filtering in the context of the Fourier transform, I'd like to consider an example that deals with filtering in this particular context. So at this point, I'm going to skip over the slides that are identical to the ones that were covered earlier and simply proceed to an example that relates to filtering in the context of the Fourier transform. So in the earlier unit on Fourier series, we covered the material on this slide, and this slide, and this slide, and this slide, with the exception of the example that's mentioned in the bottom left corner of the slide. So what I'd like to do at this point is consider example 6.38. In this example, we're given an LTI system with the impulse response little h, where little h is given by this particular formula here, and we're asked to use frequency domain methods to find the response little y of the system to the input little x, where little x is given by this particular formula here. So the way we're going to approach this problem is to use the Fourier transform. And to begin with, what I'm going to do is compute the Fourier transform of little h and little x. In other words, I'm going to take the Fourier transform of this particular equation here, and also take the Fourier transform of this particular equation here. And I'm going to start out with this equation that I have highlighted. So taking the Fourier transform of little x, we can observe that on the right-hand side of this equation, all of the terms are either constant terms, like this first term here, or terms that involve a cosine function, like this term here, for example. So to take the Fourier transform of little x, we simply need to use the, these two Fourier transform pairs from our table. We have the Fourier transform of 1 and the Fourier transform of cos omega naught t. So using these two Fourier transform pairs and applying them to this right-hand side, when we take the Fourier transform, this gives us this next line here. And all I've done in going from this highlighted line to the next line is simply reorder terms. In other words, by reordering terms, we obtain this particular line here. The next thing I'm going to do is take the Fourier transform of little h. So little h is given by this particular equation here. If we take the Fourier transform of this equation, very trivially we have this first line here, where we now need to simplify this particular Fourier transform. So we have something that looks like the Fourier transform of a sinc function times a cosine function. To handle this particular Fourier transform, we use the Fourier transform pair that was found in example 6.36. In other words, we use this particular Fourier transform pair here, appearing in the annotation. So by applying this particular Fourier transform pair, we're able to take this Fourier transform, and in doing so, we obtain this next line, in other words, this line here, which we can then rewrite in terms of this expression that comes on the next line. At this point, we can now make the observation that because the system we're dealing with is a linear time invariance system, it must satisfy an equation of this particular form here. In other words, the Fourier transform of the output of the system, which we denote as big Y, is equal to the Fourier transform of the input to the system, which is denoted as big X, times the frequency response of the system, which is denoted as big H. If we take the formulas we obtained for big H and big X above and substitute them into this right-hand side and simplify, what we obtain is this particular expression here. Now, in this particular example, we're trying to find little y. So since we now have a formula for big Y, we can find little y by taking the inverse Fourier transform. So if we take the inverse Fourier transform of this formula we have for big Y, this trivially gives us this first line here, 
And now we need to simplify this inverse Fourier transform here. And to do this, we can use a Fourier transform pair, in particular this pair here. So we have a pair of terms which involve two shifted delta functions, which is essentially of the form that we're trying to take the inverse Fourier transform of here. So by using this Fourier transform pair, we can simplify this inverse Fourier transform to cos of 4t. So now we've found the function little y. And lastly, I'm going to jump to the next page of the example that shows plots of big X, big Y, and big H. Here we have plots of the functions big X, big H, and big Y. Big X is shown in the top left, big H is shown in the top right, and big Y is shown in the bottom center. If we consider the top two graphs for big X and big H, we can graphically determine big Y, which is simply the product of big X and big H, by visually multiplying the two graphs. Because big H is only non-zero in the intervals marked in green, when we multiply big H times big X, we're only going to pick up the two terms that involve the shifted delta functions that are shifted by minus four and by plus four, which results in the graph shown in the bottom center here.